Okay, so I think I have a title for my series. I'm calling it Python Physics. And this will be lesson three. So today, I'm picking up right where I left off in lesson two. And so if you want to see them all, I put them all on the playlist. I know I've looked at YouTube videos before. I'm like, where's the next one? And it's not always obvious, which is kind of weird. I'm not super great at YouTube, but I'm pretty good at teaching Python. I'm not great at Python. I'm great at teaching Python. Okay, so what we want to do today is to make a graph. Okay, because let's, let's just pick up with this program where we had right before. Uh, let me put this back at a equals, um, what did it say, 0 0.02, and dt, let's put dt at 0.25 just for now. Uh, and then so the, if I run this for, oh, I need to change this. Let's put this to while t is less than 1.5. So it's the way it was, originally was, so I'm going to run it. Okay, so everyone's happy. Uh, it looks like it's working fine. Yep. Okay. Now, but what if I wanted to know where it was at each interval or what if I want to make a graph? So one thing that I could do is this. Watch this. If I, if I indent these print statements, um, I can actually even put this all in one. Let's just do one print statement. Let's do, let's make it look nice, right? So I'm going to, in, oops, it's weird. Indent, I'm going to say print uh, x equals x meters at t equals t seconds. And so now I, I put a large time interval so it wouldn't be, get too annoying, but now I can do this. And so th there's all my data, right? But you can imagine if I had like a time step of, of one one hundredth of a second, then this would be, you know, a lot of stuff. You could, you could write these down, you can make a real graph and everything, but we can make graphs in Python and it's actually pretty easy. Let me show you the very, very basic way to make this, and then I'll show you how to make it pretty. And then I'll show you how to make it useful by making two graphs on the same thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a graph. Actually, I'm gonna make a function to plot. So in Python, and again, you can go to this glow script help. Let's see if I have it up right here. Uh, go to help, um, and then go to work with 3D objects, which is not, but whatever, graphs. And everything that you need to know about graphs is right there. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you the very basic stuff. So I'm gonna say F1 equals G curve. That's it. So G curve is a built-in function in Python to make a graph. F1 is the name I gave it for function one, but you could call it Bob or Jason or Rhett or physics. No, yeah, you could call it physics. Um, you could call it whatever you want. Case does matter in Python, so make sure if you if you make it uppercase. And, and it's a function, but I didn't pass any parameters to it because I don't really care. Now down here, I don't want to print. Instead, I'm going to plot a data point. Actually, let me go up here and just plot a data point. Watch this, f1.plot uh, a y x coordinate and a y coordinate. So if I do one, one, and let's do f1.plot. Every time I do that, it plots a point. Uh, 2.1, 1.1, 1 .1, I don't know, it's made of something. I run that. So you see there, I have a graph, it's kind of, it did, it, it's just two points and it connected it because it's a G curve. Okay, if I change that to G dots, it'll look like this. See, there's, there's point one, there's point two. Isn't that nice? Okay, but not very useful. So let's change this back to G curve. And then down here, I'm gonna get rid of these two statements because I don't really care about that. And then I want to make a plot every time I have a data point. So I'm going to say f1.plot, and this f this f1 has to be the same name as you made it up here. Oh, I'm covering up part of the graph. Oh well, that's fine. That's fine. And then for the on a plot position versus time. So I want time on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to say t, and position on the vertical axis x. Now let's run this. Boom. There's your first graph, position versus time. Is it not curving a little bit? Position versus time. It should be a parabola. It's maybe, maybe my acceleration is too low. Okay, that's better. Um, let's make it a little bit higher, just, just so it looks cool. Okay, so there's my curve. And you can see right there these little bends in there because I'm not plotting that many data points. Okay, now let's make make this better. Uh, first of all, 
let's, you know, the first thing you may say is, look, there's no labels on the axis and that's not cool. So I'm gonna fix that. So in order to do that, we have to also make a graph. So a graph is another object in Python. I'm gonna give it a name, even though I don't have to. I'm called G1 is an object graph. And if I run that, nothing really is gonna change. But in this graph function, I can give things like title equals kinematics. I'm just making up some matics. And now run it. There's the title, okay? I can give an X title. And all these parameters, you have to type them exactly how they're supposed to be done. And they're all in the glow script help if you can't remember. X title equals time. And this, this can be whatever you want because this is a string. Y title equals uh, X in meters. And let's uh, run that. There you go, check that graph out. Okay, we're gonna make it better, we're gonna make it way better. Okay, I'm gonna put a, if this parameter space gets too high, I wanna add another term. I can just press comma and press return and continue on the line, that's that's fine, it's allowed. Uh, so I'm gonna say width, width equals 500, height equals 250. So then it'll make the graph a little bit smaller so I can see it in my window right there. Doesn't that look nice? Okay. So we're doing pretty good. Now back down here, I'm gonna I don't want it to be a boring black curve, so I'm gonna make it blue. So I can say color equals color dot blue. You can change the color to whatever you want. There's my blue cover color. And watch this. Markers equals true, capital true. So now every time it puts a thing down, it, it puts a point. What well, don't really matter? But that's kind of cool, right? Okay, so that's a pretty good graph right there. Uh, so now, what if I want to uh, put more data points? So what if I, I do this to point one? You can see that it gets a smoother curve. Um, if I if I get up too high, I'm going to want to turn that markers off. See, because those markers are all overlapping. So let's just turn. You could delete this whole thing, or I could say false. Okay. What if you want to What if you want to save that graph and use it in your lab report? Um, well. You could just take a screen capture of it. But another way to do it is in the graph up here. I think it's up here. I'm going to say comma fast equals false and run it. You notice how it changed, right? It changed and it looks different. And you'll know, so what it does by saying fast equals false, it actually sends the data to Plotly, an online graphing tool, and then puts it in here, which is super awesome because you actually get some more features. First of all, I can save it. I can edit it online. So let's just do that. I think this will work. There's my graph. And see up here, I can have all these other features like changing the style, changing the thickness of the, of the line, uh, changing the the grids, let's see, the range, the lines, uh, grid lines, no grid lines, no horizontal grid lines, uh, you, all these things. You can change all these things. I mean, you can make the graph exactly the way you want it to, uh, and that's kind of cool. So hide the tick labels, don't hide the tick labels, whatever. And then you can save it from here too. Uh, or you can also zoom in, right? I can like highlight and it zooms in. I can move the graph around, uh, auto scale it, uh, all these different features. Compare it, uh, we get data values right there, um, reset the axis the way they were. I mean, I, I usually keep this on fast equals true, not because it plots that much faster, uh, but it just, it just the default looks a little bit better. This also gives you uh, the values with this cursor. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. But but you have that option if you need super great graphs. Okay, that's a graph. Let's see, let's go back to our presentation here. That's not it, sorry. This is it. Okay, so this is the homework I have in the, uh, in, in the thing, I'm confused, let's see, okay. Uh, in in the, the presentation. Remember, all that code is online, and it, I'll put a link to that 
uh, in, in the video down in the description down below. Okay, so make a plot of velocity versus time. Uh, and then let's see, let's see if we can do that. So if I go over here, I'm plotting position versus time. The first thing I'm going to want to do is to change the title of this. I don't want it to be called X. I want it to be called V. So up here, I can just say, oops, V. V. And this is actually the X velocity. And I'll give it units, meters per second. I put square braces around my units. I have no idea why. It's something I always do. Uh, this over here, uh, F1 equals G curve. I really don't need to change, right? It's still going to be that. The only thing I need to do is down here change uh, this to V. That's all I need to do. Now I'm plotting T versus V. And I run it. And there you go. The velocity is increasing at a constant rate. It tells me something about the motion. I can see that the velocity is increasing at a constant rate because it's constant acceleration. So there you go. Okay. Let's think back. Remember that problem? It was said, when when's it going to stop? Right? How, how, where is it going to stop? And how long is it going to take to stop? And so I had an acceleration of negative uh, zero, negative zero point. I put it as negative zero point one. Uh, and I'm going to run this, and I'm doing it for one point five seconds, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to change this back to position x. I can leave it as v. And you'll see here, does it stop? No, it doesn't, because it needs to get down all the way to a velocity of zero, and then have a negative velocity. So let's change this to uh, 10.5, just picking a number, and you see there, right there, it stops. So I can get the time right from here that it stops. Approximate time. I mean, it's not going to give me the exact time. If I go back over here and change this to uh, position versus time, and also we can see what that looks like. Looks a little bit cooler. Uh, so I'm going to change. I want to be clear. I don't want to cheat. X. X. And you can see that it's speeding up. I mean, it's, it's moving in the positive direction, but it's slowing down until it gets to this point where it is moving the fastest it can. That's the farthest it gets, and then starts going back down. So you can get the data from there, too. Okay, back to the presentation. We did that. Okay, this is a great problem. I love this problem. We're going to solve this problem from scratch, even though I give you some starter code to begin with. Uh, and I'm going to use a graph to solve this problem. Okay, so here's the question. Car A starts at x equals 0.5 meters, has a velocity of 0.45 meters per second, and car B starts at x equals 0 with a velocity of 0 meters per second, but it has an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. I didn't put the square because I was lazy. Uh, so when and where does car B catch up, and where do they meet? Great. I think it's a great question. And we're going to solve it numerically. Okay, so let's go back over to this code. I have here already a car moving. But I need two cars. I need two cars. So I'm going to have two X's, two V's, one time. Okay, so I'm going to go change some of this code up. I'm going to call this FA. And then down here, I'm going to call this A for, a for car A. Uh, and then I'm going to call this XA, VA. Let's call this AA for, just for fun. VA, AA, A, oh, VA. A, 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 A. And let's see if it still runs, because I could have missed something. Okay, so now let's go back to the presentation. I'm going to make, so car A is at X equals 0.5 with a velocity of 0.45. So X A equals 0.5. Uh, the acceleration is zero. Now let's run it. Okay, so that, that looks good. Now we're going to make another car. Let's make car B. I'm going to call it XB equals zero. It starts at zero. VB equals zero. It starts at zero meters per second. But AB, the acceleration for car B, is not zero. And I can't, I already forgot what it was. It was 0.2 meters per second. 0 0.2. Okay. So now I need to do these calculations twice. I need to do them for car A and for car B. And I need to make a graph for car B. So the first thing I'm going to do is open this graph FA. I'm going to add up here. Take. I don't really care about that. Label equals car A. I just think it's cool. And then it's going to put a label on the graph. FB equals G curve. I want to make it a different color. Color equals color dot red. And then label equals RP. 
Now down here, I need to update the velocity for car A. I did that. I need to update the car velocity for car B. VB equals V. And you notice the car A doesn't actually change velocity, but I'm just trying to be fair here. Plus AB times DT. Down here, I'll do XB equals XB plus VB times DT. And then I'm going to plot FB dot plot TXB. So where, where do they meet? The question is where do they meet? Uh, I, I just I want to point out that in in when I give this in class, I actually I actually have it give them a program that looks like this. And the question is where do they meet? And they're like, I don't know. Because these two lines don't cross. They don't cross because we didn't run it for long enough. So you'd have to actually just manually change this. What, what, that's what I, I encourage them to manually change that until they get a time where they cross and they can find out that time. Okay. But you can see here that they cross at, this is my x, y uh, values at time of around 5.42 seconds and the x is 2.9 meters. And that's the answer to the question. Now you can solve this problem exactly. You can say, okay, when is xA going to be equal to xB? Solve for the time. You can do it, okay? And you should. Um, this one is one of those problems you could do either way, but it's kind of fun. So let's just cut this off at, let's do this. Let's do it another way. What if I don't know how long it's going to last? I can say, um, so remember xA is greater than xB, and I want to run it until that's not, not true. So let's do this while xA is greater than xB. You see how we can do the little tricks like that, right? Now it's going to run, and right when they're, they're equal, it's going to stop. And then I could print, I could say, okay, where is that? Print xA equals xB equals xA. They should be the same, or at least close meters. And then the time, print t equals t seconds. And there you go. So it, they, they meet at 2.9 meters at a time of 5.42 seconds, uh, approximately. If you want a better answer, you can make the dt smaller. Uh, you know, And you can get an exact answer, too. Okay, But I'm, I'm trying to get you set up for cases where you cannot get an exact answer. Okay, so let me see what's next on the list. This is lesson three. Uh, oh, the next lesson we're going to do is projectile motion in one dimension. So throwing a ball up and, and doing a whole bunch of problems like that. So again, if, if, the, if you find this useful, I mean, look at the other videos. And this is really, I'm, I'm kind of teaching more advanced physics students uh, or physics faculty how to use Python. Um, I'm not trying to teach the physics. So I'm using basic physics, but you really need to practice these things in order to get used to them. So uh, I'm going to keep on cranking these out until I get tired or you or the internet breaks. I don't really know. Until I run out of everything I know how to do. Okay, so I'll see you in the next lesson.